Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. So we have our prompt. How exciting. Vegetables or a scarecrow. Oh, the scope in this. We can just do so much with this prompt. I do not know how I'm going to make those two prompts elegant for one of those pieces. The, um, the wave of colour and even our oh, champagne garden should be fine. That's just brown stitching and should be able to work something in there. But the wave of colour, that's my, I think, going to be my challenge. The French garden, easy. This is going to be great. Great, great, great. This one shouldn't be too hard either. So I thought I'd start with this one because this is a piecing it together type of video. So not video, piece. So it's it's sourcing elements and blending them all together to create your story or your theme. And I have some pieces that I want to add to it. And I have a beautiful piece that is just perfect for this prompt. I've been wanting to use it in something like a stitchery for a while, but um, haven't had the opportunity. So as soon as the prompt came up, I'm like, it's finally found a home. Now, where do I start? Let's start with the piece. I, I think that's where we'll start. Now, look what I got. Now, the unfortunate thing is, let me just zoom up, is it is on a journal, which I'm not too worried about. Now, the history of this piece is many, 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 many moons ago. When my husband and I were first married, we thought we might have family. Yeah, I was so, so, you know, so many ideas in my head of what I wanted to do in my life. I wasn't real maternal, but it did come in waves. It was like at periods of time when I'd go, oh, yes, let's have a baby. Let's, you know, try for a baby. Long story short is about 10 years went on, 15 years went on. My career was starting to take off. I was really interested in my career in the way of retail management, business, all of those fantastic things. So the wave of having a child came and go. In amongst all that, I was doing a lot of cross stitch. So I started a panel that had these little squares and I had the Beatrix Potter cross stitch images. And I think I did about six or seven of them. And this panel then went into the cupboard and never ever got finished because it would, my plan was it was going to be a baby blanket. And of course, baby never happened for a million reasons, just never happened unless we went down the track of IVF or things like that. So anyway, we decided not to because the careers were going and then we bought businesses and uh, you know how life just rolls on by. So this panel has been sitting in the cupboard for years and along came junk journaling. So very early in the piece, I made this journal. It was a um, themed around um, a children's book of Beatrix Potter's. And it was just a place to keep ideas when I started out. I know someone, I think it was Gail, said um, a journal to keep her ideas in. So I started doing that a little bit, but I never really got back to it to finish it off. And it was a mix of spring, um, I nearly said Harry Potter, but it's not. It's Beatrix Potter with lots of space that never, ever got filled. And in amongst it was the children's book. In amongst it is um, right at the very end, the last signature goes into all sepia tones and it was very much going to be a dedication to um, Beatrix Potter herself. Look, that page is upside down. Very, very early stages. So look at the garden fabric. Packets of seeds. Now there's an idea. Packets of seeds. Okay. Maybe that's got application in one of the pieces. Instead of the veggie patch, let's get ready to create the veggie patch. And the first thing you need are packets of seeds. That has to have some thought put into it. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. This journal is huge. It's for signatures. It's just massive. That spine goodness sakes, it's the length of a finger. So there's no, no attachment to it. I've never really used it. And I'm thinking 
Mr. Mr. Bunny here is going to come off of it somehow. I bet it's glued really well because of course I did. If I can just get it off. Oh yeah, no, that's coming off. I'm going to get, I've only put glue on the edge. Well, that's good. I'm going to get Mr. Bunny off of here. Sacrilege, you might be thinking, but I think he is better to be kept in this piece because he has a lot of memories for me. Yep, he's coming. He has a lot of memories. So, good memories. There's no sadness here that I didn't have children. Please don't, don't feel sorry for me. It was a choice we could have fixed and because we were getting a bit old in the tooth and self-indulgent, we decided that we wouldn't. By then, I think we had a business too and I had so many staff. I felt like I had 20-odd kids anyway. So, <laughs> And then we just never... Never went on. Anyway, we're getting getting off the track here. We should be talking about stitchery. Gee, that's really glued. So the plan is to get this piece off of this journal as easily as I can. I was prepared to destroy the journal if I had to. It looks like we won't need to. Might just have to come up with a new cover for it one day. This um, it was a beautiful piece of Ada cloth too. It had a real soft, see that's vintage lace there. Mm, should get that out if I can, but I won't. I'll focus on Peter. Yeah, the Ada cloth was really soft and beautiful to stitch. I used a little bit of it recently in a bird stitchery. But it's gonna happen. So, the plan with this piece then is Mr. Peter Rabbit will go in randomly somewhere like we're doing with this. There's no um, garden path as such to follow, no perspective or anything like that. None of my pieces are really that way, which is good because it gives you a lot of freedom because you're not worried about where you're heading and where you're going. Come on, Peter. The other thing I want to work into this, I showed you in a haul video earlier in the week. Um, that I went hunting for some crinoline ladies, you know, the classic embroidered lady that you'd never see her face. It's often a hat disguises the fact that her face is there. Oh, come on, Peter, let go. Oh, my goodness. Sacrilege, isn't it? But it'll be worth it. I'd rather my little piece be in something that's going to be seen on a wall or something you know and not just in a bookcase so yeah i found some crinoline ladies in that hall i popped a few aside that well one in particular that i really wanted to utilize so as part of finding a home for young peter here we're free oh my goodness we're free as part of finding a home for young Peter here, I want to, that's come away there. Do I keep working that out? So that stitch will hold, but I could bury that under something. So that'll disguise the fact that that, corner, that top edge has got a little bit frayed. Okay, so we've got our rabbit who's eating out of the vegetable patch. So I'll bring him up to the camera so you can have a closer look. How cute is he? Look at the radishes. Radishes are really, really pretty. They'd be gorgeous on a piece. Very easy to do too. Some little radishes. Okay, so this little lady I want to work into my piece. She's got a garden path. Like, it couldn't be much better. I love this yellow edge on this piece. Normally, I'd look at that and go, oh, goodness, why yellow? But that works beautifully with this piece, especially with this over here. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to fussy cut her out and just bring her. So that would be trimmed off. Might taper this out here a little bit so it sneaks across. 
she is going to go in there. The other thing I want to find a home for is the bird. So once again, fussy cutting the bird out and seeing where we can work these pieces in. So let's start, let's start with this little lady. We want to get a bit of a taper happening. So I'm just going to stay away. We'll leave a little bit of Bit extra on there. Beautiful linen. I have to keep that because that'll be beautiful to add into collage pieces. The colour is subtle. It's worn and soft. That's a very pretty piece of linen. So I'm pretty pleased with this embroidery that someone has done. Being that it has the steps to the garden, I sort of feel like I'm anchoring anchoring this panel. You'll be pleased to know I got a good night's sleep. I know it's prompt night and things get a bit silly, but I, I forced myself to stay up to, um, I think it was about quarter past 10 and I was dozing on the couch and I thought, well, if I can get into bed and get to sleep and potentially not have my phone nearby, now, I know you should never take your phone to, um, to your bedroom. But, you know, it's, it's where I get my best work done. I, the phone handy, you know, you're either half asleep, sort of asleep, should be asleep. And having the phone there, I can look at Pinterest. I can do, you know, flick through images, just, you know, enjoy the, the viewing that is out there. And then if I'm, I start to get annoyed with myself and I'm like, you need to go to sleep, I pop on a YouTube video and within eight and a half minutes, I'm out. I start to feel really sleepy and I'm, a, I'm out. So it does help me get back to sleep. But it's when I do my best work, I think. It's when I've got everything from the day switched off. Just wondering if I should go over the top or under. I'll just bring it in close. Just piecing things together. It's a lot of fun. Do I bring it up a little bit? Merging it all, making it appear as it is one. So you'll be pleased to know I got a good night's sleep. I got to about four in the morning and I still felt really dozy in that and I thought oh beaut oh yes those prompts will be out oh I feel dozy so I started dozing again and then suddenly my brain goes the prompts they're out let's go let's go <laughs> so I'm like in the shower thinking vegetable patch because I, I didn't even put the video on because um, I could hear my husband was deep in sleep and I thought oh I can't and I didn't know where my earphones were I didn't know what that what had happened there so I started um, watching it with no volume and you know how you have the um, the text come up that if you're hearing impaired you have the text to read I was watching that and it's like hello everyone welcome to the journal of um, the Roxy creations you know the, the intro the girls do this time we have the prompt of vegetables vegetable patch you know scarecrow so I'm reading that on the screen and I'm like, rocked, boom, straight into the shower. I could pretty much ran down the hallway, straight into the craft room, a million ideas. And I'm like, which one do I start? Which one do I start? So I thought, go and make a coffee. Just take a chill pill. And I thought, I'll start with this one because I can brain dump a few things that I've got in the back of my mind. And then I also, before I started the video, I went down to my big cupboard where I keep um, vintage patterns and, you know, old projects and just my stash. So I had a little look through there and I grabbed some quick inspiration too that I thought I might show you guys. So as we sort of plan our piece and how we're going to work this prompt in, 
it um, there might be something there that catches your eye and it'll help me sort of start thinking about the other three pieces and what topic within the prompt I'm going to focus on or you know do the prompt in itself so I'm thinking with the French garden how, how trimmed up do I make this I stop at that scallop I think it gives me scope hello Casper um, I'm thinking with the French garden I'll focus on pumpkins and a vine maybe a scarecrow I sort of don't feel the scarecrow suits that piece to me a scarecrow is very gardeny I don't know if it'd be in that garden. I, I don't know. It might happen. Who knows? But that was my initial feeling that that may not be where I head. Love to do a scarecrow, aren't? Pussy. You all right, Casper? But I just don't know about that. So I'm thinking pumpkins and I'm thinking going to the corner and starting a vine because pumpkins are fantastic they have the the, the tendrils the beautiful leaves then these pumpkins themselves which can come in different shapes sizes pumpkins are a really fun topic to embroider so i'm thinking of using a pumpkin vine as a border to my piece somewhere and i'm thinking the bottom corner because we've got the fence and i think we could really drift it up and go right out to the perimeter that's my initial thoughts i haven't even picked up the piece and had a look at it but just in my head pumpkins came to mind so that's where i'm heading with that piece now where am i heading with this piece i wonder i wonder where do I put this little man in? He's nearly a bit of a feature. I think I need to build in around my girl here. Floral. Our wildflowers prompt. Like we did here. Just to encapsulate her. Just to frame her a little. That's sort of where I feel like that should come in. And if I do that, I think I would then bring in our boy here so maybe he starts to come in here as the central feature yeah I like that that makes sense design wise we do a, a flush of floral through here our little man in the middle and then maybe our bird let's cut the little bird out and maybe the bird blends with the floral that connects our two pieces together I don't know The other thing I was going to think about is beading a pumpkin. And I thought, well, maybe beading a champagne or pink or a lavender pumpkin and then the vines. Well, that's easy. This is my wave of color where we drift between pastel tones along a, you know, this wide piece. But I've never beaded a pumpkin. I haven't done a lot of beading. So I'm actually thinking of sending a message to Sonia Steptoe. She's one of our national treasures in this country. She is a wealth of skill and knowledge. And oh my goodness, she's just a, a teacher. She's hilarious to listen to. She just makes you giggle. She makes you feel good. So I'm thinking of sending her a quick message because she started a Facebook page. I don't have my phone in here um, to tell you the, the name of it. 
Um, I, actually, I might just stop the video. I'm going to go and get it. I'll put it in the description, but I'll go and get it as well and show you. And I'm going to send her a message. Hold on to that thought. Be back nice. in a second. I'm back. I grabbed my box to do with this project too, because there may be something in there we need to pull out to piece this together. Before we do, I got my phone and this is Sonia's new Facebook page. Sonia and subscribers stitches and shares. So that's the page. I'll bring it up to the camera. So join in. She's just kicked it off. She's been stitching for a long time and she's welcoming everyone to show their pieces. Oh, that was one that popped up last night. Look, we're getting sidetracked. Look at that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful work. Could you imagine? Is it Moxie? Yeah, Moxie Miller. Oh, talk about stunning. But there is some really, look, that's the same lady, silk embroidery. There is some gorgeous, gorgeous work popping up on this um, page. So just for interest. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. But Sonia at the moment is doing heaps of stitches. And she's also doing a series on beading, dragonflies, flowers, all sorts of things. And the other night, I, yesterday, I watched her do stump work. And she did a daffodil. And I thought, oh, a, a three-dimensional daffodil would fit beautifully with this due to the colours alone. So just sent me in a whole nother um, tangent. And I, I do want to explore stump work a little bit. You know, I'm certainly not going to master it by no means, but I think I could pull off a, a small project and the daffodil looked like it had potential. So I'm thinking I'm going to send Sonia a quick message. I'm going to do it right now and ask her, can she show us how to bead a pumpkin? How do we get that curved shape with height? Do we put some packing in there? Do we do we use some felt and layer it up to get that height and then pull the beads in over it? In my head, logically, that's how I think I would do it. Maybe, yeah, she might have another idea that I haven't considered, but I'm thinking build up a structure for the curves of the beads to go over it. You could even use bullion knot. There's another one. Bullion knots coming over the top of a curved piece. That would be perfect. Delicate, elegant for the piece that is the wave of colour. So that's, yeah, that's where I'm sort of thinking. So message will be sent and let's see if Sonia, oh, I do like that. Let's see if Sonia will grace us with a tutorial on. Oh, I like that. It's getting our little bird to sit right, isn't it? Maybe I. Focus on bird first. Yeah, I like that. It's like the bird is in a tree looking down over the little lady. I think that'll work. And these little gaps, I can piece together little elements that will sit in there. So, yeah, so this video is just about simple piecing together historical elements that I want to create a collage with and having a bit of a, a brain dump and a think about the other pieces so French garden I'm thinking pumpkins and explore pumpkin vines and all of those fun things I might just trim that back there and sneak those flowers in there a little um, antique, uh, no, what's the other one? Champagne garden. That shouldn't be too hard because 
it's got those earthy tones about it so I'm pretty confident I can come up with something for that one so that'll secure that corner yeah I like that and the plant the flower from the bird can come up might drift yeah no that's that's all right that'll break up that lineal line that we've got happening there too yeah so hopefully Sonia can oblige us with a video on how to be the pumpkin she's going to be sitting there watching this video going oh my goodness corinne what have you done to me i hope she can i'm, I'm positive she can i'm gonna guess she would build a base thread the beads onto a needle and then bring them over the 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 leaves well they can just be embroidered and they could be three-dimensional so it's got a little bit of play in the piece That'd be pretty. The tendrils, that's pretty easy. I did tendrils on one of my other videos where I wound some cotton and glue around a pencil, let it semi-dry, and then carefully slid it off, and that created the tendrils. So they'll be repeated. And they're on that piece too, if I recall. Yes, they are. They're on the grapes at the beginning of that piece. So that will work. So fingers crossed Sonia can... Give us a, a quick tutorial. I'm not cheeky. I'm very cheeky. Okay, I'm liking that. So let's have a look in our box of tricks here and see what else could come into this particular stitchery to build to build up our story. I sort of feel like I need something a little dainty, but I might go back to this piece. Just revisit this guy briefly. <clears throat> so we need something that is a bit curved. Yeah, I'm like that. And I could come, all right, I'm going to to fussy cut out the butterfly because he's not quite right the other thing I've got here that I want to show you before the end of the video is a bag I made a long time ago I wish I had the pattern for some reason I don't I was very young and I must have just thought no I don't need it I've made the bag or Maybe there wasn't much of a pattern. I just don't know. So if anyone recognizes this bag, I think it was put together by a, a fabric shop here in Brisbane. So it might be to their shop to encourage, you know, a project within their business. <clears throat> because there are some elements on this bag that are perfect for what we're doing. And I thought, oh, I've mentioned it before and I saw it in hanging in the cupboard and I'm like, I'll grab it. I'll bring it on to the video today and it might just give us something that sparks an idea for you guys. You might even see something in there. I know there's some amazing buttons on it. I don't know if it was in those buttons were in the kit because I, I wouldn't even know where to go looking for these pieces now. It may have even been a kit I picked up at one of those big craft fairs. So the kit seriously could have come from anywhere. I look, it's like fraying there. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. It's showing that this piece was used. And that's great. I wonder if I could work this crochet edge in. I think I might be able to. I just had an idea. 
So I'll show you this bag anyway, because it is absolutely the theme of Down the Garden Path. And there might be something there that catches someone's eye that the style of it may suit. Where am I heading with this? So, oh, the butterfly would look good with him. Oh, yes, butterflies found a home. So let's bring that into there and let's stop it there. Or do we have to stop it sooner? Don't want to cut something and not be able to use it. Gosh, look at the colour match there. Like, you could not get this any closer. Even the blues, like, oh my goodness. It's like you go and plan your piece and you pick all your cottons. I think I actually need to stop it back up there for size. That purple flower is my end. So let's gingerly sneak that out. Come on. Come on, do not cut that. Okay, we're through. I think I've cut that French knots thread in behind, but that's okay. We can pop a few little invisible stitches there just to secure that. I do want to go through this piece and French, um, seed stitch everywhere. And I've only done a little bit of it because I've been so wrapped up in the antique gar the French garden. There's been so much work in that piece, the video after video of that one. I knew that piece would absorb me. So I do plan to go away for a quick trip uh, an overnight, and there's a good four hours drive either way. So I might actually put this piece in the car with me. I don't have to think too much. And I might get into this seed stitching. For those of you who just joined me, seed stitch is just thousands of little itty bitty stitches. That's it there. I'll bring it up to the camera. You can see the little texture there. See over here where it's plain and see where there's just these little seed stitches, tiny itty bitty seed stitches. So my plan is to seed stitch through the whole piece, which is just oh, too much work. But I know it'll bring the piece together. It'll be worth the effort. I sort of want to get the bird. Oh, Peter, I'm so pleased you've joined this piece. You fit in beautifully. We've got a, a butterfly. That's going to join the... story the butterfly is quite worn it's probably one of the areas of the doily when people's hands go to explore these textiles the butterfly probably got rubbed by many little kids little touch okay let's see how we can get this worked in <clears throat> bring it right down and across don't mind that what can we put through there I sort of thought maybe I could work some of this lace in how would I do that? <clears throat> Just going to get this piece of crocheted lace off the edge. 
so that then it just goes into my scrap bucket on my desk. And whenever I'm doing something, there is this beauty lying there ready to have snippets taken or used. So let's get it tidied up and find its home. It's forever home in my scrap box. Okay. There's the last of that doily. It goes back. And let's see, is this a good idea or is it not? So I would bring it in under the bird. Is it the right shape? <clears throat> Probably not. Needs to be, could it just come through here? That's just a snippet of something that might work. So it's just peeking through. The flower will help terminate that end. <clears throat> Just adds texture to the piece, a little pop of something, that might work. Since when did my scissors become magnetic or is it just the pin? What the hang is going on now? Oh goodness me. Oh, through the week, did you watch Susanna's video, uh, Vintage Blend Studio? She's doing a retreat at the end of the year, September, around the school holidays for all the Aussie girls. Oh, so going, so going. I've been harassing her a little bit for probably 12 months, probably when we first started chatting. You know, when, when are you going to do a retreat? When are you going to do a retreat? And she's announced a retreat. So super excited. I watched that video. I think I was four minutes into the video and I was like, I can't even watch for the details. I don't even know what we're doing, but I'm so going. So I sent her a message and said, count me in. And she's working on the project. She's found um, there's 10 spots. She's found 10 vintage tablecloths with embroidery on them. So they range all sorts of styles. And... Um, she is doing a project built around that that we then stitch on this retreat and um, we will get a pack of fabric and then inspiration will come of course as we're all sort of together stitching this piece together yeah I like that I like that little touch of embroidery through there so I'm happy with that that sort of helps give that image sitting in the background and this tree is coming through. So yeah, she's announced a, a um, retreat. So if you did want details, head over to Susanna's page, Vintage Blend Studio, and there'll be something there all about it. And there'll be more details actually released at the end of the month because she's still finalizing the pieces that we'll do she's finalizing the schedule and all of that type of thing but she's has her venue sorted which is half the task i'm going to use this piece of embroidery uh, uh, this piece of crocheting up this side as a bit of an edge i think so we're just going to pin that down won't go all the way because, you know, your spice of life is a variety. But that is going to find a home. So I can now trim that back, stitch it on, and that will become one edge, I do believe, to my piece. So I've got a peek of it through here and then that piece going up there. All right. So where are we at? That's pretty good. Now it's really just about 
disguising all this. So we either bring in more of this little guy It's very hard to pull small bits out of this. That will work. This little fellow here looks like it's planted. It has stem pointing down. So what I'm thinking is it can go at the bottom corner and be part or look like it's part of her garden that she is in. But it's sort of connecting down here. Yeah. That will work. This little guy will fit down here. You probably can't see what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. Let's just zoom in a little bit there for a bit more detail. That's better. So, okay, start again. This little embroidery has uh, two stems that are pointing down as if they're coming out of the ground. So what I'm thinking is this little corner here where everything's coming together, I use this to tie it in. I like that. So it's part of her garden, but it's in the foreground. Not that I want to get hung up on depths and things because it's random. For goodness sakes, we've got a rabbit hovering in the air up there. So none of this makes sense. It doesn't have to, which is the beautiful thing of this project. It's, it's liberating. We're not worrying about scale and what fits with what finding this very refreshing and I think it's like actually it's like what Rachel said about her mum and how her mum has moved through so many techniques and exploring them to the point where she's ready for the next technique the next thing we're all the same we're all the same we've all been through the the formal things of cross stitch or of embroidery or quilting whatever it may be now we're in the world of you've had your training, guys. You, you know your, your basics or you've had a snippet of little things. Like I'm not a beater and I'm not a silk embroiderer, but I've had a play with it. I've had a bit of a hack around on the corners of the industry. So now I'm not dedicating my life to learning a beaded piece. I'm just doing a little bits of it here and there and collaging it all together. And that is where this slow stitch movement is. We are collaging our learnings from our world of our craft room. Does that make sense? So we can bring paper piecing in, we can bring, oh, look, you know what I mean. There's so many, and if you're new, oh my goodness, you are so lucky because when we grew up doing all this, we had a grandmother or a, an aunt who would teach us fancy work. And I remember being made to unpick things to get that stitch perfect and you don't need to now. I know it's probably, I can hear my grandmother saying that is sloppy work. That's sloppy work. <laughs> Bless her. But it's not. It's, it's being across many techniques and then the trick is blending it together to make one piece. Does that make sense? Anyway, that's how I'm justifying breaking all the rules. So, yeah. All right. I think I'm there. I've just got this gap here. Do I try and work in another little bit of doily? Let's have a play. And I think, I think it could handle just a little bit peeking through. Let's tuck it in there. Higher. I 
don't want to lose this embroidery here. It may not work. I could trim out those flowers a little bit because I have left quite a lot of fabric around them when I fussy cut. If I do that, yep. That will work. Just need it to sneak back a little bit more. Oops. It actually looks like it's a scalloped edge to it, but it's not. Only we will know that that's joined. Do I want that flower fussy cut a little bit more? Ever so small bit I took off, but yeah, I like that. So when you're watching this video, it'll be Saturday morning, and I'll be in my car on my way back to Brisbane, most likely, yes, I will be seed stitching. This will be the perfect piece for me to take and put some mindless hours of stitching down. Where was I looking at? This here is just a little bit rough edge. Just want to trim that a fraction. Oh, hasn't that come together? Just admiring my handiwork. So I've now got a lady in my garden and Mr. Peter Rabbit is in the garden. I'll have to probably leave this loose a little because I may want to tuck something in behind the next prompt. We've got a nice little window here for something. There's gonna come a point where there'll be a prompt that I won't have a doily for, so I'm gonna have to do some fancy work. But at the moment, I'm foxing my way through. I know I wanna do um, a beehive or something like that. So that might end up coming into it or it could be a prompt who knows so I'm going to need a spot that has that line that would be a, not a bad spot because um, I can use these flowers to lay up onto it maybe I just start thinking about a beehive and I guess if it comes up as a prompt in the future, well, then that's a pass on this piece. There's a beehive that's been worked into it. So if I was going to do a beehive, what would I do? Well, that'd be a straight embroidery, wouldn't it? You've got to have a beehive in the veggie garden because it helps pollinate so many vegetables. So it really does fit in the garden, especially with this prompt. Um, okay, we'll come back to beehives, but I'm gonna do a beehive here, guys. So I'm gonna to need to find a nice piece of linen to tuck in there to give me that background because I've got lots of scraps. So maybe I'll go visiting some of these doilies like this guy and I get in there underneath all that a nice piece of linen got a little edge on here I wonder if I can work that in no maybe I tuck so we're sort of working back on the background now. I'm 
and let's get this piece in. We've made a decision. We're doing a beehive at some point, but I'm going to prep the area for it so that I'm ready. Ready with a nice background is what I'm thinking. So I'm sort of undoing everything I just did, but it should work. That goes into there, that comes into there. This little guy can come down into there. Oh, goodness me, it's going to go further down. Should have thought of this 10 minutes ago, but anyway, doesn't matter. These pieces evolve because we don't really know where we're heading at any time. Yeah, that's good. That will blend well with everything that's going on here. Especially that crocheted edge. Maybe I'll take it up. No. Just bear with me, guys, as I fiddle here. Let's get that edge right. I'll have to look at it away from camera just to double check that my crocheted edge is going to be straight. Oh, it's just not sitting right. Hmm. I think it's got to come up and over. Therefore, I think I've got to trim this neatly. Following its edge. And then I'll collage up and over it with some little flowers, I think, to blend this edge in. And it'll be a similar scenario, I think. The, the beehive would be the feature, and around the beehive we'd create this um, frame to sort of finish the story of the beehive. Does that make sense? So that's going to go. That's better. I like that. So we've got our piece of linen in. We've got our edge in. Could you imagine if I find on Marketplace a doily that has a beehive in it? I went hunting for crinoline ladies because I just couldn't cut up the one that I own that's up at my dad's farm. And I thought, no, I'm going, I could just, I can't. There's too many memories there for that one. So you need to find pieces that you're happy to chop up that, you know, you can work in. But I think I'll do the embroidery myself. I haven't yet had a play on this one with my own work. So I'm going to find myself an embroidery. No, I'm not. I'll probably just sketch something. It'll just be too hard, I think. I'm going to find my pen and sketch something in here in the way of a beehive. I think Peter Rabbit's crooked. Just needs to. That's good. Does that corner come up? No, it has to be softened by that edge. I'm fiddling around so much here. Okay, I'm happy. We have a plan. This piece is on its way. And I think the next video will be sketching in our beehive and some little bees. And everything that goes with that and then some floral coming up so that it's sort of nestled in amongst our garland here of flowers. I think that's where we're heading. 
All right, now, I've only got about 40 minutes because we did 20 minutes, then I stopped the video. So I just want to now grab this bag that I made years ago. And like I said, I don't have the pattern. If anyone could tell me who, what, where, and when that bag may have hit the market, that would be great because there's some gorgeous things on it. All right, that's my piece. Now, here she is. Look at this baby. I need to zoom up. I made the bag and I never ever use the bag because I don't want to get the bag dirty. Isn't that silly? Because there was so much work went into it. Let me just fold that down a little bit. Okay, so what did they have us do on this? Oh, the memories. It's very um, textural, as in it has a lot of dimensional pieces to it, buttons and digging forks. Look at the wheelbarrow with the button as the wheel. How good is that? That's an old glove, a gardening glove. Must have all been in the kit because I don't know where I would have got that from. Um, some flowers embroidered on with some pre-made ribbon flowers. Then the buttons, look at the little blue buttons that made the hollyhock. That's a great idea. The birdhouse buttons with the stitching around them coming at the back of the wheelbarrow. Then the little house. Oh, there's teddies in the windows of the house. Ah, look, this is when I was doing French knots and they're 3D, so stump work French knots. I can't even remember how I did that three-dimensional then this opens up and is a pocket on the side of the bag so the little house is a pocket very novel there's a three-dimensional pot here there's a piece of card in under there and it was covered with the fabric a little bit of paint some stitches to make a pot and then the flowers come out of the pot. That'd be lovely to include in a stitchery. That would work in my champagne garden, a three-dimensional pot. So then there's paint that's gone onto it to build up the path and just little flowers, little buttons. There's a cowbell. And then we come to the side. Oh, hello, we've got a beehive. Oh my goodness me, look at the B button. So we've got some leaves, they're pretty ordinary. A metal heart, another three dimensional pot, a beehive, and if I remember rightly, this is a pin cushion in under here. So unhook the B button. And what have we got? Yep, a pin cushion. Oh, goodness me. Secure that up. So there is a beehive made out of cross stitch. More flowers, more textures. There's a beehive button. Then the other side of the bag is another house. And the tree is the feature this time. So we've got this gorgeous big tree. Look at all that. That's all couched down, twisted threads so variegated brown thread all couched down and twisting it as I went to create this dimensional feeling to the tree that's gorgeous I have to try that again then the tree itself take the pressure off yourself you don't need to do a lot of leaves look at those leaves just little itty bitty hints of leaves just subtle bird you know another thing we need to add to our pieces is a bird's nest using some of our scrappy bits of thread i need to get a bird's nest in like using bits and pieces of like the bird has gathered up lace through the garden and created a, a nest so need a bird's nest where are we going to put a bird's nest i don't know who knows stay focused corinne hydrangeas look stump work using hydrangeas oh i can see how i did that oh tricky girl 
Okay, so I've embroidered a hydrangea flower with lots of French knots on a piece of cotton. Where's my pen? So I've drawn a circle and another one with a heap. Goodness me, can't draw. That's a circle. That's a circle. Filled it full of French knots. And then I've cut, let's do it down here. I've cut the piece out around my work. Oh boy, this is a this is a good idea. Gosh, you just don't remember everything you do, do you? So that now, let's put that circle back into position. Filled it full of French knots. So now it's just solid with French knots. Then I've used cotton, needle and thread, and I've done a tacking stitch around the perimeter and gathered it in like a yo-yo, making a Suffolk puff. Technically not, but yes, sort of. So now I have a cluster of French knots making a hydrangea and then stitch them in on the pot to get a dimensional feel to it. That would look really cool on, um, where is it? This piece, the, the, um, I can't even speak. My head's just going off on a tangent now. Oh, what's it called? Champagne garden. We could do a pot on it full of hydrangeas. And I'm thinking along the lines of for this one, maybe a wheelbarrow with some garden tools in it. Maybe the farmer needs their spade to dig their veggie patch. Yeah, now I'm heading off on a tangent. So because it's got this chocolate stitching tone, I'm thinking along the lines of adding a wheelbarrow with some packets of seeds and parking up the wheelbarrow somewhere in the paddock so I could do some ground underneath it maybe, you know, to some dark tones to just signify that it's been um, dug up ready to plant and in the barrow are some tools and there might be a hydrangea pot sitting nearby I think just to build up a bit of texture as if it's just been parked up it's in the middle of this cottage garden there's hydrangeas all around in pots and I'll have a go at doing this three-dimensional pot I'm guessing where can I have a little look yeah, okay, so I've cut out the shape of a pot in card, covered it in fabric, and I can see there's a gathering stitch. Why can't I remember these things? I have to look at the piece to remember. I've gathered around the fabric to create that little pot, then add a little bit of paint to it to just sort of get the shapes of the pot. There's a topiary tree there, little French knots. Okay. <clears throat> that's that's what we're going to do with Champagne Garden. We're going to put a wheelbarrow parked up with the tools to start a veggie patch. Okay, what else have we got on here? We've got a beehive going into our colourful one. Don't think that's anything in there, just another pocket. I haven't done my house yet either on the French garden, so that's something that needs to be considered and then on the side look at the time we're, we're going way over today we've just got a general embroidery of ladies holding pots that's another thing we could bring into our pieces i don't know if the girls would announce a prompt that could be a human someone who's working the garden or owns the garden my crinoline lady is sort of along that path so there's an opportunity that maybe you could stitch into your piece the owner of the garden doing something something to think about all right i better go because this video is going to go way over 
but I thought it was a good opportunity just to have a look at this bag because it's in our theme. Look at all that. Oh, look at the tiny little embroidered flowers I did there. Look at that. That's like one thread, just a hint, just a hint of them. Oh, goodness. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you alone now. I think I've brain dumped enough. And, um, yeah, got a plan. All pieces have a plan. Pumpkins, tools and wheelbarrow, um, Peter Rabbit, and hopefully Sonia can show me how to do a beaded pumpkin. I shall send her a message. All right, guys, I'll put Sonia's channel linked below and also um, um, Susanna's where she talks about her retreat. All right, guys, got to go. See you later. Bye.